Our next speaker is Dr. Cooper, um, Dr. Bill Cooper. He currently serves as program director for the Environmental Engineering Program at the National Science Foundation. Um, his home base, he's a professor of civil and environmental engineering at the University of California, Irvine, and also there serves as the director of the Urban Water Research Center. Uh, he has a background in environmental chemistry and is internationally recognized expert on fate and transport of dissolved organic matter amongst other water quality issues. So Bill, thanks for being here today. Uh, thank you, Peter, and everybody here, it's nice to be up north. Uh, <laughs> that is, if you're at Irvine, this is up north. Uh, we're only lateral from Washington. But I don't want to take a lot of your time, but I think I do have some good news. Um, a lot of what we've heard already kind of fits in the sweet spot of the National Science Foundation. The National Science Foundation funds roughly 25% of the basic research in the, in, in the United States. Um, and with a little um, luck this year, we may even get a $500 million kick up in our budget. But within that budget is where I think maybe this audience is gonna be most happy. And that is in a new program called Infuse. That's innovation at the nexus of the food, energy, water systems. In other words, it's gonna be, again, uh, with a little luck, it's gonna be the next major sustainability program at the National Science Foundation. We have a program called SEAS, which I honestly don't know what it stands for, but something like environmental sustainability is the ES. Uh, and that's being naturally sunsetted. So at the National Science Foundation, because we do basic research, we're not a mission-oriented agency. We have programs that come up, sustain themselves, and then are naturally sunsetted. So the SEAS program is being sunsetted in 2017, 2018, and in its place, we're hoping that this infuse food, energy, water, nexus program will emerge. And it actually grew organically out of a program called Water Sustainability and Climate that we funded uh, $25 million worth of research last year in. And these are multi-university uh, endeavors, and a lot of it is at the nexus of all of these three systems. And when we talk about stove piping, uh, unfortunately, NSF is just as stovepiped as every university is, and we're now trying to figure out some of the program directors, like myself, at the lower levels, um, lowest level, um, in NSF. We're trying to figure out how to break down those stovepipes and truly look at interdisciplinary research. So those of you in the audience that are in the academic settings, the, the more you can get to interdisciplinarity, the easier it is going to be for us to get to sustainability. And I think it's actually quite that simple. And just to give you an example of when I was putting together a, a review panel for the water sustainability and climate last year, I had to have four people from engineering, four people from geology, four people from SBE, social, behavioral, and economic sciences, and four from USDA um, slash bio. So we, this was a, a project, a program that we did in conjunction with the US Department of Agriculture. So that's, I think, a good news. We are starting to look at interdisciplinarity more and more at the National Science Foundation. And any of you that are truly doing uh, the sustainability research know that we, we've got to break down these stovepipes. Another thing that's very interesting that's happened just, in fact, three weeks ago, we had an interagency uh, three-day workshop at the National Science Foundation, which was DOE, EPA, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Department of the Army, and NSF, looking at energy-positive wastewater treatment plants. Now, you're going to say, what on earth does that have to do with us? Well, it has a lot to do with the food energy water because it's going to be the, implement, the incorporation of food wastes in wastewaters that are actually going to actually make them energy positive. And when we think about that a little bit. One to two percent of all the energy that we use in the United States just goes to the wastewater treatment plants. If we can make those wastewater treatment plants energy neutral or energy positive, what a phenomenal thing we've got there. And we're also then starting to look at distributed networks. Um, a lot of what we built back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, these big, huge infrastructure, centralized wastewater treatment plants, centralized water plants, takes a lot of energy. And we don't have to tell you how much energy we spend running water around California. 
Um, but it takes a lot of energy getting that water to and from these wastewater and water treatment plants. So if we can start looking at uh, not only distributed wastewater and water treatment plants, but also distributed energy plants at a smaller level, and, and you think about this, and, and I've been running into a little bit of, of, of uh, pushback within NSF. They say, why would you go after rural, for example, wastewater treatment plants? I said, well, first of all, there's 10,000 of them. And second of all, they're the easiest to move real fast into new ideas. So I think that I think what I would like to leave this audience with, and the, the next thing I really want is I want grand challenges. I'm, I'm putting together um, a federal family to fund a research program, not a research program, a, a project with the National Research Council called the Grand Challenges and Opportunities in Environmental Engineering and Science in the 21st Century. How are we, as environmental engineers and scientists, going to solve this question of sustainability? Um, and so um, we're, we're organizing uh, next, I have a workshop in, in two weeks up at Yale, in fact, and I wasn't sure that I was going to get much of my community there, and it's already sold out at over 200 participants. So I think from the federal point of view, I think we are seeing that, that this whole issue of food, energy, and water, and we're right at the epicenter of it here um, in the state of California and here at, at, uh, in, in the upper Central Valley, um, we have to solve those issues if we are going to effectively fight sustainability. So with that, um, I'm sure I'll be around uh, all day tomorrow, today and tomorrow, and if you have any questions about the National Science Foundation. I think one last thing, I do serve on an interagency committee on environmental modeling, uh, and we're having a meeting out here in October at the Corps of Engineers, um, and I found out this morning, I think that's at, on B Street, or 2nd Street, 2nd Street, somewhere down there. Uh, so I'll be back in Davis in, in October, um, but that's with a whole bunch of, whole federal family of environmental modelers. So uh, certainly I'll be reporting back to them on this project. I also sit at a, on an OSTP subcommittee, the SWAC, which is the subcommittee for water availability and quality. Jared Bales, number two person at uh, USGS, chairs that with Suzanne Vendrunek from EPA. Um, so I'll be reporting back to that group from this meeting as well. So I'll be using this as a source of information to form my, my colleagues, the environmental engineering science community, um, the, international, the uh, Interagency Steering Group on Environmental Modeling, and also the SWAC at OSTP. So I'll be around, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them uh, over the next two days. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much for inviting me.